guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, host of Jedi Council, Christian Harloff. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Collider Movie Talk. Very excited to talk movies with you guys today. Before we get going, a couple of announcements here. The first is Comic-Con is right around the corner. San Diego Comic-Con, the whole crew is going to be there. And we have some details on the meet and greet. The Collider video slash Schmoes meet and greet will be on Thursday night, 6 to 9 p.m., right outside the Fox Sports Grill. Make sure you guys right outside there, if you guys are there for San Diego Comic-Con, come by, say hello, 6 to 9 p.m. We're going to be doing the meet and greet. The other thing we wanted to let you guys know is that today we we realized this, that we've been kind of cutting down some of the Twitter questions lately. So what we want to do, we're going to go over a few of the main topics up top, then we'll go through Rewind but then we're going to take a lot of Twitter questions today. So we're going to make sure that you guys have a chance to get those Twitter questions in. Make sure that you're already tweeting out to Ashley, at Ashley Mova, at Collider Video. Start getting those Twitter questions in now because we're going to focus a little heavy on the Twitter questions today. But it is time for those movie topics. But let's find out who's on the panel. Ashley, let us know. Joining us today with Christian is also the host of Collider Heroes, John Schnapp. Hey, what's going on? we got a Collider Heroes coming at you today and i can't wait to make those twitter questions tasty man get some good mm. questions in there yo that flavor Please. also here mark baby carrots Ellis. thank you very much <laughs> ashley finally after knowing her for two years ashley mova tagged me on instagram this morning ladies Did and you gentlemen like it? Yeah. i haven't seen it yet i just heard you about haven't it seen it. That's i just great. got the notification i haven't investigated further just yet <laughs> all right let's get to those first topics okay Back in April, Collider.com reported that a bidding war was underway to acquire the rights to a live-action Pokemon movie with Sony Pictures, Warner Brothers, and Legendary among the interested studios. Now it looks like a frontrunner has emerged. According to a report from Deadline, Legendary Pictures is moving forward towards a deal to land the rights to a, make a live-action film based on the decades-old Pocket Monster game from Japan. The game has now received a giant second win since the release of the new app at Pokemon Go, which has taken over social media conversations all over the world. Details are scarce at this point, with no deal having been reached. There have been rumors of a potential Pokemon picture for some time now, with one scenario rumored to have had Chronicle scribe Max Landis on board to write the script. Even Legendary at one point was rumored to be near a deal when everything went silent. Now it's come back around. As of now, no deal has been made for Legendary. Christian, would you be excited for a live-action Pokemon movie? Would I be excited? Absolutely not. Um, do I think this is a really smart move? Yeah, I do. Because look, th what they're doing is they're capitalizing quick. This app, this, this caught storm, like, a cut, what is it, last week, yeah. and it's just going bananas. So instead of them waiting and then someone's going, wait, well, what are they making an Angry Birds movie for? It was years ago. They're doing it now and I know Pokemon had its run and now it's having a second win and they capitalize on it as far as a business move goes yeah do I look at this thing and and look at my like my, my dad trying to figure out Skype yes yeah, I have no <laughs> idea what the hell's going on with any of this stuff but it's not for me people are losing their minds and I'm not just gonna go this is stupid because I don't get it people are loving this thing so it makes sense to capitalize on it even if there is somebody maybe my age running around in a park looking for like I don't know it's Ikachu or Ikafu or whatever <laughs> You find it? Is it on me? Is it on me? Mark, I think we found one. I think it's on the street. No, 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 no. Zippy doodles on my head. So that's it. I think that. I captured Crim Crom. You find him? Crim Crom is on your head. You just went from your current age to 98. Zippy doodles and flim flams and schnozwangas. Yeah, do you care about this? No. But do you think it's smart? Yes, it's a genius idea. Pokemon Go, it didn't catch a second wind, Christian. It was a trap. Tropical storm of madness. Of just Someone wrote, you old around. AF, bro. <laughs> I, I can't argue with that logic sure. in the chat room right mm. now. I, I, I think that it is a genius play. I'm surprised it took this long for them to try to launch an app like this, but it makes all the sense in the world because as Christian said, if you're going to make an Angry Birds movie, you're going to do an Emoji movie, even if you do a Lego movie, Pokemon, now with all of this popularity, this resurgence, if you will, it makes total sense. You're going to see a lot more Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon. Uh, what do you think? You want to see a full action Zippy Doodle movie? Or what? Well, that Pikachu, that whatever that, that image is, is really cute. Like a live action Pikachu is cute. Yeah, until you get close to him. Yeah, and then it electrocutes yeah. you like Baraka or whatever. Um, yeah. It's, uh, 
you know, it's a game for kids and adults are having fun running around capturing these things. Does that make a movie? No, but Angry Birds was a video game where you're like literally throwing, you know, what is it? Pigs at stuff? Or I can't even remember. I think it'd be cool to do a live action thing. You have to, to, to actually bring Pikachu to life in a live action world. If they do it in a place where it's not like the Dolph Lundgren Masters of the Universe, right. where they make it part of the actual world, I think it could be it could be interesting. I, I you know I, I was I was almost hoping that it would be like they're gonna just go into production on a like a Pika or a Pokemon Go movie, right? And have like you know a mad 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 world like gotta catch them all. All these people running around and just shoot it like next week, like like <laughs> just right. write it now. Get like ten amazing comedy writers and write this, and then just shoot it next week and drop it literally. Everywhere the you following should, week. You That's what that, I would like. You know what I actually would like to see? I hope someone does this. I want to see a documentary on all this stuff. That would be this yeah, all Pikachu went down. Go Go Baby. Because how it all went down within yeah. the like it caught on fire. It's crazy. This, the past week. The like, server kept crashing. The server keeps crashing. When you try to play the game, it keeps crashing. I'm in the middle, I'm about to flick you one of those too? things. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> the, the kids are doing it. I, I gotta get, get on board. So we, they put a on the. We have a, a side channel, the uh, the Shmosno podcast channel, and they put on the Pokemon thing. And you watch as I walk in, and they're doing this thing. I look lost. I don't know <laughs> what they're doing. It's it's a funny video. It's like you see it. Josh McCuga is and uh, and Copster. They're like looking at this thing, but it's just like I walk through and hear them. It's like they're speaking another language. But I'm here's old. the question with this with this movie though: Is do you make the movie and try to capture a larger fan base with it, a la Warcraft? or are you just going for the hardcore Pokemon fans? Because the proof is already there that you're going to have enough to make a, a financial windfall if it's just the fans of Pokemon. But you, do you try to expand it to capture a mass audience as well that may not be interested in Pokemon or understand where the game is? That's a decision they have to make. Same thing that the Tetris movie has to decide on. Same thing the Emoji movie has to decide on. Imagine if they tried tying in this Pokemon movie with Pokemon Go. Like this movie will probably come out, if, even if they sped through it and rushed through it, it won't come out until next year. But imagine if they tied it in with like a, a 3.0 version of this game where it's different Pokemons at different movie theaters. I mean, that's crazy. Like if they, they have to capitalize on this craze right now. So announcing a Pokemon movie is not exciting to me. What is exciting is if they're able to capture what they have right now and capture that and make it come out as soon as possible. Yeah, I was out catching Pokemon a couple days ago nice. and the uh, the AMC uh, Burbank 24 was a gym. And so, it, it, which is like, it's it's like a, a big, you know, burgeoning activity of Pokemon just, just just bleeding out of that thing. Was there like a muscular Pokemon working out in there? How does this game work? No, but it's, it's like you take over a gym. It's like right. you're somebody who, in real life, you got a lot of Pokemons to your credit, right. and you take over a gym, and then if, if hey, I want that gym, you got to go fight somebody. Really? All right, that's how it works. Zippy Doodle, what's next? <laughs> the first image from the upcoming It movie has been unveiled, revealing the new Pennywise played by Hemlock Grove actor Bill Skarsgård. The new Stephen King adaptation has been in the works for years, with Mama Helmer and Annie Mouchette in the director's chair. Filming is currently underway with a release set for September 8, 2017. Schnepp, thoughts on the first image from it? I'll do co 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 cocaine! Uh, reminds me of Roxo from uh, Metalocalypse. That's, I mean, literally, that clown just did a ton of cocaine. Um, it's scary as hell, is another thing I could say. It's a, it's a, it's a really good update of the Tim Curry creepy it. We were talking about this right before the show, where... Mark was saying, if it if you couldn't see its teeth, Tim Curry from far away looked like kind of a messed up looking bozo clown. Yeah, I don't Little necessarily offset. cross. If I see Tim Curry from a block away, I don't necessarily cross the street. Right. If I see this clown, I am going in the yeah, opposite, opposite direction. direction. Right. Yeah, I think it's a really well done, updated look, and it's a creepy looking clown. So, you know, if that's all you needed to sell me on it is, and, and I was talking about this a couple days ago, when are we going to see the clown? Now we've seen the clown. I, just, I, I think it's great. I'm with you. I love the, the clown. I mean, it was, it's obviously the best part and the selling um, factor of it. And it pays off because you, you release an image of Pennywise and it doesn't work. <laughs> you, lose, you lose the interest <laughs> in the movie. Yeah. But the fact that you see that you need this clown to be scared, you need the fact that, it, that <gasps> it's kind of hiding in the yeah. dark a bit, totally. too. And it's like he doesn't, you don't have the full image yet. No. You know what he looks like, but he's hiding in the shadows. He's yeah. always hiding in the shadows. You don't know where he's going to come from, what he's going to do next. That's Pennywise. That's the most terrifying thing. Like the first half of it is one of my favorite horror things of all time. I loved it. He's. He, he, he was curry was was frightening yeah this dude just alone by the look of him looks frightening so yeah I, I, this is a and let me just add if you, you go to the full 
full poster page yeah. on Collider.com, and you can see his the top of his head starts to scoop off. So mm -hmm. you know he's got a bigger, weird top head, which That's is awesome. similar to the Tim Curry, but it looks even more disturbing when you look at like, where does it, does it just egg out? Does he have a giant egg on his head? It's frightening. Looking. Yeah, images like that are why I go to Burger King instead of McDonald's <laughs> now. Like that is the one of the scariest things I've seen is Pennywise, and this new incarnation of it makes a lot of sense. You should put these guys on every street corner when Pokemon Go comes out, when the next version comes out, just to keep these kids at bay, just to realize there's scary clowns out there. Yep. Right. Do, you, do you like the image? Love okay. it. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's next? The first full trailer for A Monster Calls has been released online. The film is based on the award-winning children's novel and follows 12-year-old Connor, played by Louis McDougal, as he attempts to deal with his mother's illness, played by Felicity Jones, and the bullying of his classmates by escaping into a fantastical world of monsters and fairy tales that explore courage, loss, and faith. A Monster Calls opens October 21st and also stars Sigourney Weaver, Toby Kebbell, and Liam Neeson as the voice of the monster. Mark, what did you think of the trailer for Monster Calls? Whew, it was very impressive, and it just got better and better as the trailer went on. But the, initially, I'm like, oh, what is this going to be, like a like a BFG thing where the, the kid befriends this huge giant? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it going to help me with my current bullying situation, with the current dreariness that is my life? And then it went so far beyond that. And I'm a guy who liked the BFG. This movie looks like, I mean, this thing could have Oscar potential. This thing looks amazing. Amazing. Obviously, the filmmaker, the guy who did The Impossible, he knows how to tell a very dramatic story. This looks great. It looks emotional. It looks, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it gave me, it reminded me of kind of BFG meets Pan's Labyrinth almost. Mm. Um, it is something that I, I had seen one of the trailers before and I said, yeah, this looks pretty interesting. But this trailer just kind of came out of nowhere yeah. and it looks refreshing and it looks original. I, I really, really want to see this movie. I think it's a, and Liam Neeson has been used countless many times to do voices, whether it's Aslan or, or whatever. He's done so many voices, but even that, I had to turn, uh, turn, I turned to Riley and I said, who's doing the voice? Because they kind of changed it up a bit. And then once you listen to it, you go, yeah, I mm. can see that. But, um, yeah, I want to know more. The emotion part between Felicity Jones and the kid already, I, I know what's going to happen in sure. this movie, and I feel it already. Yeah. So I, I thought it was done really well. I love The Impossible. So this movie is something that I am now really, really looking forward to. Same here, man. This trailer knocked me down. I almost like felt like, like watering up at the end. It was like, very emotional, and it definitely felt it really like it locked into that 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 helplessness that mm -hmm. happens if you're bullied when you're a little kid and how do you deal with it and with him he was like smashing and breaking things and him him and his mom like Fel Felicity Jones boy you know whatever we just saw from that trailer like it just seemed like a very powerful performance and it hints at like horrible things to come they're just letting you know it's a it's a you know it's a it's a transformational film is probably what it's going to be. The kid has to grow up through some pretty tough times. I love that uh, the monster seems to be in his id. You know, it's something that he's going through. It's not a real monster. So to me, at least, it's it's it seems like a lot uh, a lot deeper of a film than perhaps BFG. But I haven't seen BFG yet. But when I saw this trailer, I was like, I cannot wait to see this film. You know, it's nice to see Toby Kebbell like oh, and yeah. see his face. You know, mm -hmm. like it's, he's not like a creature. He's not mm -hmm. like an ape. It's like exactly no, that's Toby Kebbell, and he's a really good actor. So I look forward to seeing him. And that bully you talked about had a really punchable face. You know? You know, when you see a bully in school, you want him to have a punchable face. That's where right. if he gets his come up and it's going to be from a giant tree monster, just, just giving him a nice right cross. All right. Now, before we move in to rewind, just a reminder that we are going to be doing a heavy push on these Twitter questions. So Yay. if you're not sending them in now, send them in fast Twitter, and furious. Twitter, 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 bombard Ashimova and make sure that you get in, whether it's movie <laughs> questions or behind the scenes stuff. Let us know, but do it quick. Uh, all right. So let's get on to Rewind, brought to you by our friends over at AMC Theaters. We explore what's come out in the last 10 and 20 years. Ashley, what came out 10, 20 years ago? 10 years ago, there was You, Me, and Dupree, and Little Man. And 20 years ago, there was Multiplicity and Kazam. The only thing that stands out out of any of these movies, uh, I, I didn't. I know some people liked You, Me, and Dupree, but no thanks. For me, it's Multiplicity. Is it a dated movie? Sure, but the technology back then, was uh, the, it was pretty good for, was it 90, for 96? Um, yeah, Keaton playing all these different weird characters. Yeah, and, and the different versions of himself and the, the way that they kind of explain the science behind it. I've, I saw it recently, and it, it absolutely is dated, but I still found myself kind of watching it and enjoying it. Mm -hmm. and, it's so, and it just 
Michael Keaton is one of those guys we've mentioned many times. He always gives 100%. Yeah. He always, no matter what the movie. So that's the one that stands out to me. Yeah, that? in the modern re reemergence of Michael Keaton, you forget what a great comedic presence he was, and totally. multiplicity is a great example of that, particularly when he's not just playing himself, but also the, like, the little more testosterone-up version of himself, and then that fourth version of himself that isn't quite up to par with the first <laughs> three right. versions. Uh, the one that stands out to me, though, is Kazam. So I remember Kazam coming out and being like, God, Shaq can just do anything. Anything. He can he can roll. He was so big you could put him in any movie. Is he playing a genie? Yes, it's stupid, of course it is. But that was Shaquille O'Neal in his absolute apex, both playing basketball, being athletic, and one of the most intimidating big men of all time. And it was before Steel came out. It was after Blue <laughs> Chips. So it was like right when you're like, how many movies is this guy gonna he make? Capitalized. He's got a rap yeah. album coming out. He's he's all over Pepsi and Taco Bell commercials. He was everywhere in '96, and this is a great representation of that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, ten years ago and twenty years ago, they put out a bunch of crap. That's all I can say. <laughs> um, I will say, Multiplicity was a fun film, but it just makes me think of a better film called Night Shift, which was the introduction of Michael Keaton. I mean, you know, look. Little man, give me a break. It's almost like the Shaq Lambs brothers were like, like somebody dared them to do something even stupider yeah. than white chicks. They're like, yeah. okay, we know you guys put one over America yeah. when you did white chicks and it was successful. Make a dumber movie. Or they were like, like um, hey, we got like two weeks left with the crew. Can we just come up with something? We have a, some <laughs> expendable money and we have this extra set. Let's just put your face on another face. Like the just garbage <laughs> films. That's like you, me, and Dupree. Go away. I, get, I have nothing. Yeah. But mul multiplicity is funny. As everything that Mark said was true. Oh, thank you. All right. <laughs> I said it actually. Okay, <laughs> moving on to Twitter questions. Now it's time for you guys to us to catch up over our time lost with you guys over the last week or two. Let's get those Twitter questions in. We've been doing them. Ashley, what do we got? All right. Ace Kennedy writes, good afternoon. Do you believe 4D movies or virtual reality will be the new phase in the movie going experience? I think that virtual reality Ooh. will be eventually. Yeah, I think that that's the next big thing and now whether that's you know five or ten years from now i can see it i can see I mean, you and i had done this one time we were both laughing at each other because at, at first we're like oh, we look so stupid kind of looking around but then right. you're so into it and this is the yeah. early stages primitive and this is the early stages and once we get full blown movies uh, that you can watch and be like imagine you're in star wars in 10 20 years like looking around as I don't know. I think it's going to be I think the possibilities. Happens. What you're talking about, though, because they have these uh, like 360 cameras now where they can film entire scenes that are 360 that the, a lot of people are thinking about VR movies, I think, in the wrong way. I think people are thinking like it's going to be like a video game. You know, like you go and like you're in control. It's like, it's not going to be no. like that. It's going to be like a movie with edits and cuts but they're going to do them in a 360 environment. Yeah. By shooting everything 360, it's just changing it from one camera that's shooting the, the person to, you have to basically create an open set, so it's gonna be some certain challenges right. to the filmmaking you can't process. Have a guy standing exactly, the unless you, yeah. and, hey, we're making a documentary, right. then you can have all that right. flavor You're in like, there. Right. Your head's moving all around, then you just see this boom guy like, Look yeah. the other way. But, and they, and they also the get paid way. as an actor. You're a boom guy and you're also in the right. movie. So everyone right. gets double Couple paid. A sad card today. Uh, would you do yeah. nothing? <laughs> totally said three things. Cut. You know, right. we're like, it's audio's out. But uh, anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm Sir Lancelot. <laughs> I'm here to save you. I think Move it's going to be the awesome. Left. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, VR documentaries, should you should get on it immediately. Get that 360 camera. But I think that's the way of the future for VR movies. And wait till you, like, when you just said see a Star Wars VR film, Think about seeing like any of the Star Wars movies, but you can look around right. the entire wherever you're, if you're in a, like a spaceship and you're fighting and trying you to blow up the, the Death side, Star. Yeah. You can look around. It's like Red Two, we're right here. We're to your left, and they'll 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 do certain cues and things in the film to to make you look to the left or the right or upside down or whatever. But I think that freedom of VR that no one's really thinking about right now is the real way to go with VR films. If you do this right, it is a license to print money yes. at an unforeseen rate. Crazy because money. I saw, I saw The Force Awakens five times in theaters. I saw like The Avengers eight times in theaters. So if I'm sitting, and that's just me sitting and seeing the same crap I've already seen. Now, 
if you have a headset where you're looking all around and it's like, oh, the last time I was in this movie, I was right. looking mostly to the left. Now I got to go back and look to the right because of all the stuff I'm. You miss so much if you have the headset on and you're just doing this. Totally. So you need to see it like 20 times. That's crazy. Just don't make me work too hard. Like I don't want it to be a video game. Right. You know, I, I don't want to. I don't want the pressure put upon me to have to be this character and survive. Just let me be in this world and relax and still enjoy it, but also be able to see crap from the 360 angle. That sounds amazing. All right, what's next? Mujabi Ahmed writes, will Fantastic Beasts suffer from not having the name Harry Potter attached to it? It's a great question. Um, will it suffer from it? I it's got it's it's got J.K. Rowling's attached yeah, to I it, and that's really what all the all the super Potter fans in know. That it's Harry part Potter of, font. It's got the yeah, Harry Potter font, Harry, which helps. Everyone, all the Potter fans, which are Legion, know that this is the next. <laughs> it's it goes the, back to that poster. Part of the universe. The yes. poster was done so well because when you first see that poster and you just see. You know, Eddie Redmayne standing there. You're like, well, what is? And then you look down, and he's got the wand. You're like, mm -hmm. wait, is this Harry Potter? You look down again, yeah. J.K. Rowling. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. I think that the marketing is going to let you know, and they have been marketing it with the Harry Potter music. Mm. So when the trailer comes out and you're, dun, 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 you're like, okay, okay, I get it. They're marketing it to let you know this is part of the universe. They're not trying to s stay away from that. No. To, and I think that I, I absolutely think through trailers you're going to get it because it feels like it. And you have, and it's David Yates. Totally, it's so, the same guy. You know, what's uh, is exciting is uh, Radcliffe just last week was like, I, I could come back to Harry Potter if you know if J.K. writes a story in 10, 15 years, and then you're like, man, they're gonna do this mm -hmm. beasts thing for mm -hmm. the, like the next a trilogy, and then they're gonna rock back just like Star Wars go thirty years into the future or something. So. I don't disagree with anything you gentlemen said, but the question on the table is, will it suffer? So will it not do as well as the Harry Potter movies did? Because the Harry Potter movies had the benefit of saying Harry Potter in the title. And yes, I, I don't think it's going to be as successful right. as a Harry Potter movie, but it could launch a new franchise in the same universe. So it's going to suffer a little bit of box office just because it doesn't. it's not named Harry Potter. But I think it's going to do fantastic business. It's going to be the family event film of Thanksgiving. I wonder if it'll if, if you go to the very first Christopher Columbus, the very first Harry Potter mm -hmm. and say that box office compared to this box office i think this box office would beat that one yeah inflation well even with inflation, inflation. It's market with, even with inflation it will beat it oh it's a different time <laughs> it was an above average fantasy fun <laughs> uh ashley you're a harry potter fan i am so do you think that this is gonna suffer at all um you know it's hard to say because like we work in this world where everyone knows that fantastic beast is attached to harry potter so i hope that people catch on to this and see the posters and just know that it's harry potter but I can see how that could happen. I yeah, you're right. Like from where we do our space, yeah, we everyone all knows that. Right. right. Well, um, we live in a world where we know that Darth Vader is in Rogue One and it's not a sequel to Episode <laughs> Seven. But there's kids out there catching Pokemon right now who have no idea hey, what where Rogue that One game factors in. Still into. cool. You can you can still believe that and play Pokemon. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I, I'm I'm on board with Pokemon Go. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. Sure. What's next? All right. The Dutch movie guy tweeted at us and said, "What do you guys think of this?" And he retweeted Variety. Um, they posted an article saying Lionsgate sets eighth Saw movie in horror franchise, and that's been in talks for a while. I think it's gonna be called. The Saw Legacy. Yeah. Ugh, the Dutch. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't um, know. It's, a, it's a Halloween event. I'm sure it's gonna. It always comes out in Halloween. I'm sure it'll come out in Halloween again. I I actually have never seen a Saw movie. Really? <gasps> I've never seen one. Of them. See the Stop. first one. It's James Wan. You like it? I know. I'm sure it is. I like James Wan a lot. But for me, that's that's the type of horror stuff. I just I'm not a, I'm not Fair a big enough. torture porn guy. Sure. I just, oh it's, like, my it's, it's not my. It's torture porn light. It's not full torture. Porn. But it's still. And I, and I, <laughs> I know people love the first one. It's my favorite movie. Hey, of let all me time? let me yeah. say this. It's cemented though. The guys who are <laughs> directing it, they're the Spirig brothers. Yeah. And they made this totally crazy film called The Undead. And I highly recommend if you haven't seen The Undead. It's literally. Uh, zombies meet space aliens and they take over this you know you got to see it though it's crazy and over the top so when I heard they're directing it that made me more interested in Saw Legacy because it was just like another giant house with like mur mur another murder house and you know Jigsaw running around it's not as exciting because they've <laughs> kind of explored that to death but if they're reinvigorating it may in making a sequel not a reboot but getting these crazy guys in there I think it's you know it could go off the off the uh, let's say up the chain let's just say that well you know? generally when you do when you have a horror franchise 
franchise and then it goes away for a little bit, you always reinvigorate it by putting the term legacy in there. But right. th in this particular circumstance, I actually think it sounds cool. Yeah. It's like Saw Lake. It's like, oh, maybe you get another nutcase who's inspired by Jigsaw's all these Jigsaw's brother creepy games. Or, you know, yeah, daughter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it like nephew who always went to the family vacation with Jigsaw. It's yeah. like you, you, you do have some cool possibilities there. Maybe it opens on Halloween. I say Valentine's Day. Counter program. <laughs> Damn. All right. I like it. What's next? Okay. Um, Alex Anderson writes, what are your favorite movies that have endings that make you think and aren't definite? As oh, in like, like Inception. Yeah. Uh, well, Inception, Inception is one for sure. Uh, I is, that, is that an open ending? I thought we. Uh, I thought it was kind of a closed ending. You, yeah, you, know. you think it is. I mean, yeah. the people think that Cobb is, he, he's, he's awake. It's not a dream. For sure. But I mean, that's uh, from when you. If I had my virtual reality headset, I could really go in there yeah, and explore know, right? exactly what's happening. See in who there spun the, the fucking little. You thing imagine Inception in, in in virtual reality? Oh, great! Crap, your head would explode. Yeah. You got any open ending movies? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, No Country for Old Men wasn't like an open ending, but you don't really get that satisfying conclusion. But I, I think it worked for what movie hmm. we just saw. So that's something that I like. I can appreciate. Horror movies do it a lot too. Yeah. Like the one that I, I was complaining about this the other night is Freddy versus Jason. Mm -hmm. Is like how stupid that ending is. How did it end? I can't even remember. Uh, I'm oh, gonna get. Oh, you don't even need to put the spoiler. You mean in the water? Underground. Is it, I remember. Is it, is, is it, they had this fight for two hours, and then they they stumble into the lake J where Jason drowned. So he's playing a home court game. So he cut Freddy's head off. He's emerging from the lake, holding Freddy's skull. Nothing else is, right. is just Freddy's head. And the last thing you see is Freddy's head in frame. And he looks at the camera and he winks. Now, first of all, that 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 somehow implies that Freddy Krueger had this planned out. Right. He's we're like, I know the, what I'm going to do. We're, we're going to let Freddy's him cut dream. my head off. We're in the Jason's dream now. That's yeah, what it's 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 so stupid and ridiculous trying to set up a sequel that we never got. Thankfully, what's stupid and ridiculous is that I didn't bring up Total Recall. It's a fantastic movie. Great. <laughs> you don't know what's happening at the end. Am I in Mars? Am I Douglas? Am I Quaid? Who knows? It's who, all a dream. He never I, left Earth. Hauser, not he saved. Douglas. He saved Mars. It's just like they well, said. We don't know. He never got out of that weird, you know, weird dream mechanism. The total recall mechanism. It is pretty convenient that all that stuff that he wanted. And in also the in the very beginning, he sees flashes of that girl. So like, I always felt like, yeah, he never left. That he's actually lived the double agent dream that they sold him on. But uh, for me, I don't know. Like the the. The, the ending that's not like that leaves you wanting more I guess I could say I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago Moon ends with him like going towards Earth but like at least for me I was like I want to see what this Earth is like you know it's like it left that open ended kind of like you didn't get to see him land and like see but at least for me like I like those kinds of endings that they don't give you a sequel, but it's like they leave you thinking about stuff. Right. Can you so. imagine if Back to the Future never had a sequel where you just get oh, the yeah. end and Doc Brown's like, we got to go to the future. Oh, and it's like, be harsh. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Something's got to be done about your kids. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to have? Come on, get in here. Yeah. yeah. Nothing ever. <laughs> All right. What's next? Daniel Higgins writes, is the indie director hired for a huge franchise trend almost over? Hmm. Mm, no, because yeah. we'll see what... what I mean, it, depending on what you think, and even even if Rogue One, right? If you believe all these rumors with Gareth Edwards, even though he went, he he's already done a big budget movie mm -hmm. with Godzilla, but he still, I think, got the indie. You got Ed, Colin Trevorrow. You got the dude who's directing Kong Island. He did the Kings Skull of Summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Skull Island. Right, yeah, right, I mean, right. there's a lot of guys who like started doing indie picks. And then they got snatched up. Why are they getting snatched up? They're quality directors, and they can get them for a lower price. And like a lot of directors who've been around the around the way are like, "Hey, I got these like six movies. I'm an incredible director, but I also cost an, an enormous amount of money." Versus younger guys who are brand new who have one or two films under their belt that were indies, they can get them for a song. They can be like, "You want to work on this giant franchise film that will set you up." Yeah, for pretty much a lot. So I, a lot of directors would say, "Yeah, I'll do it in a second. You yeah, know? It, it makes business sense, and also it's a great way to showcase your work. Totally. You are you are able to put together a coherent story. Like Steven Spielberg yeah. started, he did Duel, he did Sugarland Express, and then he did John, and then you know yeah. George Lucas did THX one one three eight and I, and American Graffiti, and then you know it's like that, that. That's a nice showcase for what you can do, and nobody's just going to throw a bunch of money and a huge production at somebody who's totally unproven so you at least need to see something that they've been able to pull let off let me well. say the flip side of that too though the ugly side is they get young directors who have one or two indie films because then they can tell them what to do mm -hmm. so deck, right. basically or they're pay like, them less pay, it's definitely pay them less but what i'm saying is then they also have less control 
And that's you I know just a lot, bully somebody. Yeah, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, a lot of directors are in those roles right now who are getting bullied train. because mm -hmm. the train, yeah. there's a lot of them. There's, it's just that's how it is. A yeah. giant studio machine is like, look, you do you direct, but then we're going to tell you what the scenes are, how to do what we're reshooting. With. You're not in control of that part. So there's a lot of those elements where, you know, these younger directors can like they have to fight really hard to keep certain scenes that they want. So it's a, it's a back and forth. But, you know, ultimately, I think it's good for any of the directors to take those challenges because it gets them more more experience as well. Working on a big mm -hmm. budget, working with the studios. Yeah, I hope it doesn't stop. I really hope yeah, that, that doesn't stop it because it gives it gives people because even even if they are let's say not say not bullied but if they if they are maybe the studio is able to tell them to do more but it's also that creates chops it mm -hmm. creates like how do you handle that like you problem look at some, solving right so let's say let's say hypothetically let's say that Gareth Edwards for sure like let's say that these some of these rumors are true right right and but he's come out and made these statements and he's like playing ball and he winds up going along and, and going along with these reshoots and everything he's going to have a, a career that he can continue to work on movies like this and further his career most definitely and there's some people that can't handle that type of stuff there's some people who maybe don't don't want to handle that and want to stay in the indies but it, it gives these filmmakers a shot to do this it, it lets you know where you think your path should go like you take a guy like gavin hood where it's like i don't think that i want to do another wolverine movie. Right. i don't think that i want to have that experience ever again because he did wolverine origins and maybe got pushed around by the studio a little bit it. So he's like, maybe I'm going to start going back to something that I can totally have control over. Because you may never have total creative control over a big budget movie. Maybe if you're Michael Bay or somebody like that or Steven Spielberg, you can. But it's a it's, it's a weird game that you play, and it's just a matter of what kind of movies do you as a filmmaker ultimately want to make. Well, I also think a lot of a lot of directors and filmmakers, producers, writers, directors, they use the one for me, one for you, one for me, one for you. Right. Like Nolan's been very successful at like one for you, and then I get to make my own kind of independent film, but it's big budget, like Inception or Interstellar. Those are films that like he had to make a Batman or a Batman Begins or a you know, the Dark Knight Rises to be able to make a Interstellar, to take that kind of, it's a little bit more experimental of a chance. And studios, he has a big name though, but a lot of a lot of directors are willing to take that, like I'll play ball with the big studio and do those kinds of changes. And then because of me having that name clout with that big studio movie, now I can actually get that like 20 to $30 million to make that smaller independent film or even whatever, two or 3 million. But those are really, those aren't even really, like independent films now are 10 to 20 million. That's that's the, that's the reality. All right. What's next? The sweaty nerd writes, nice. will, we, <laughs> will we see a new Ghostbusters sequel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you think Proton so? Proton packs. You can, yes. No, most definitely. I think that movie's going to make a lot of money. I mean, whether you loved it or whether you hate it or you just liked it, I think the divisiveness and also the excitement and a lot of the critics who've seen it, like everyone here has seen it, you know, can't say it sucked. It was actually had, there was a lot of funny moments in it. There's jokes aplenty. Certain it's a great things were put on the poster. Ghostbusters. You can't say it sucks. Yeah, that's my quote. You can use it. It's a pull quote. You can't say it sucks. There you go. Have I think fun. We, 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 can, we can answer this question a lot easier yeah. on Monday morning, you that's know, right. where it's like, let's just see what it does opening weekend here because then you, you might get a green light for a sequel by Monday morning. You may have to wait for a couple weeks to see what it does to the box office but at the end of the day money is what's going to be talking and wait that's going to be determined over 60 million let's see if i'm wrong you think so yeah i think it'll do over 60 yeah, yeah. if it does over 60 it's going to get a sequel i just saw it last night uh it, it you're right it are does. you going to give away your feelings on it before the schmoes no review comes out in a couple right. I'll, I'll wait for it but uh hold it back i, I can see where oh, it's going to get a sequel I can see where it goes. It's such yeah, a terrible yeah, actor. I'm sorry. There's going to be a yeah, sequel. Right. I'll hold my feelings on oh, Ghostbusters. God, Man, this I'm movie was great. Yeah. So oh. good. You see my face. All right. <laughs> What's next? Sam Carrico <laughs> writes, any guesses as to what a post credit scene for Rogue One could include? Uh, I don't think they're going to do a post credit scene. Ooh, but what if they did? No, uh, wait, they, they haven't done any post credits for Star no. Wars. That's not part no, of the thing. It's a fun game to play. Wait, wait. All right, if they did one. With Rogue One, I don't think that you have a continuation of that story because we all kind of know what happens. Right. Um, so I think what they would do is a Han Solo post credit scene Ooh. where it's like, yeah. so, so Rogue One happens and Darth Vader wakes up that morning, gets his coffee, and he's like, oh my God, they got the plants and the movie ends. And then you see the credits. And then you see Alden Ironreg as Han Solo somewhere else in some cantina, ordering a drink, hanging out with Chewie, and then that's the in thing. In Moss Eisley. Yeah, yeah, and then that's the thing. Or no, no, maybe it's like something else. 
It's like telling, it's giving right. us a little tidbit as to what the Han Solo story is going to be. So like he, he's, he walks into a bar and he just bumps Boba Fett's shoulder and looks, hey, watch where you're going. Idiot, and That'd then that's awesome. it. I think he, I think you're right. If they were gonna do one, it would be Han Solo because we're setting up that that spinoff film for the. But that's the not. Years. It doesn't take place in the same time period as Rogue One, so I would feel that would be like a weird thing, like 20 years before, and then show Han Solo. They could do it. They though. could do it. Yeah. They could do it. I, they're not gonna do one. So yeah, gonna... they should do a, a dark a Jar Jar Binks uh, as a Sith Lord. <laughs> you know what? Someone someone just said this in the chat room. If they if they're gonna announce because Rogue One. By the time it comes out, if they announce that they're going to do a spin-off Obi-Wan film, that actually could work. Obi-Wan, I mean, it, it couldn't. I mean, it's around the same like time. It's like Obi-Wan waking up from a nap you'd or have something. To, you'd, have to, you'd have to age him to the fact right. that he's Alec Guinness. Know, that would that be point. weird. I, I don't know. He looks pretty yeah, You don't want to start an Obi-Wan right trilogy with that. But but I like that vein where we don't necessarily have to stick to the timeline of the movie we just saw. Right. It's just giving us a little tease as to the next anthology film we're going to see. Sure. So I, I don't think it's a horrible idea going yeah. forward, as a matter of fact. All right, what's next? Oh, Mr. Exciting writes, are there bad movies with great premises that you all would like to see be remade? Mr. Exciting. Yeah, Mr. Exciting. <laughs> Mr. Uh, exciting. <laughs> there's a movie called The Slugger's Wife. That Do you remember that movie? Whoa. It's, Randy Quaid is actually in that movie. But it's, it's about, at the time, the, the home run record in baseball hadn't been broken. And this guy who's playing for the Braves, he, he was, and the Braves were crappy at the time, he winds up breaking Roger Maris's uh, record, but it, but the movie is really bad. But throughout it, there's some. It's, it, the, they use a great Neil Young song throughout it, and I almost think that it could be redone. But uh, trying to break Joe DiMaggio's hitting record, right? That, that could be done from whatever the crappy, you know, really crappy team. And you could do it with a good sports movie, but that's the one I was always thought of. Yeah, I mean, I was really uh, excited about The Shallows. I know some people liked it. That's like a premise that I was just like, this can't miss. And it just ended up being, ah, okay for me. That's a recent one that just bummed me out more. Obviously, you have just a total crap heap where you could have done anything, like Independence Day Resurgence. You literally could have done anything with that. Well, you didn't and like that. I am Siri. I am a giant orb. Oh, they I'm here to and help data's you. And data hooking up with it at the end. It's just one of Good the God. crappiest things I've ever, you had so much potential. What a giant hunk of garbage. Yeah. That movie. Sucked. Oh. It's not as bad as the short round data movie, but other than oh, that. Oh, I know. JMX. He's, got, he's on a roll with his like Van Damme double teaming, but with these younger dudes. Then they eat a, they have a thing that they put up the, the, the time crystal with sand. Come on. Anyway, uh, I would pick uh, Scanners. That's a movie I would love to see updated. Oh, that's a good one. I mean, it's I a love cool movie. Though. I yeah. love. The, no, I'm saying it's. it's yeah, dated. you're right. It's super it's, dated, though. It's it's super dated. But it's, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. So that's a bad pick. Okay. I take a bad here's a, movie. Here's a premise right. that I that I thought was going to be fantastic, and knowing the studio going into it, I'm like, this is. There's no way this movie isn't good. And Brave from Pixar. Oh, yeah. It's like because that movie goes in such a stupid direction with Meredith's mom getting turned. Like, really? We have all this potential? We got to stop a mom from being turned into a bear? Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's the movie? I sound like Scott Mance. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's your first Mance impression. Good. My nice. first mom, That's baby really Mance. Good. That's right. <laughs> you know, buddy, you did a great job. Uh, all right. Oh, I've got double Mance right here. J JMX, get the, on this. The com double Mance it's fighting the each Mance. other. Through the, time. I, I, Mark, you did such a great Scott job. Scott Senior, I want some ice cream? You did that in 2016. <laughs> All right, what's next? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Colby Bean writes, is Ronda Rousey's film career dead, or will we see the movies she signed up for? This is the hardest thing about signing fighters to deals. That happened with Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell was, when, was like the top of the sport as the UFC started to make their their boom, and he, they put him on an episode of Entourage, and everybody was talking about it, and then right after that, he lost the title to Rampage, and all these deals started to kind of, it, it loses its luster because that that dominance, that thing, that, you know, the intimidation kind of wears off the, no one can beat this person, that goes away, and, and Ronda Rousey, proving that Ronda Rousey is human, plus you can't act. So, I mean, that hurts. <laughs> kind, of, um, kind of hurts you, too. <laughs> uh, the way that it could happen is if she comes back and she wins the title. If she, the, the risk is you sign her to this roadhouse thing. You do it. You hope that she gets the rematch. Now that there's this new champion, uh, Nunos, uh, that she can go and she can play. She can uh, fight her. If she beats her and then go to production, go to production, quick, 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 release the movie. It, it's hard with fighters. It's tough. But I don't necessarily think it's going to happen right now, but it still could. What do you think? Is she still signed to do Roadhouse? Mm -hmm. uh, um, yes, yeah, still the deal. Look, done. you know what? I mean, she could be taking acting 
la- classes every day, and she could have been doing it for like the last like six months, and she could actually become a pretty good actress. So I wouldn't I wouldn't rule that out, mm-hmm. especially if she's like doing a roadhouse thing where you don't have to be an Oscar winner. You know, you just have to be able to realistically deliver lines. So that's why you would go to acting school, you know, and I think she's taking acting classes. So I'm not ruling her out as becoming someone who could be an action star. So I think that could happen. Yeah, Chuck Waddell ain't the best actor in the world either. And and Rampage beat him. And then Rampage, same kind of thing happened where he was in the A-team. And then we haven't seen much of Rampage in movies since Couture's then. Couture's had the most, uh, like, he's been in all the Expendables movies. And he's Randy not a great Couture's, actor. Either. Yeah, he's been in the Expendables movies. That's but, it. I mean, he delivers a line. And it's like, yeah! I know. Uh, hmm. I know. But I know. Uh, you also have a guy guy who comes from the wrestling background like The Rock. You have somebody who is just this shining example of what you can be when you come from an athletic sport. And I don't see it happening with Ronda Rousey simply because I don't know that she can pull off the acting equivalent. I don't think she ever has to fight again if she doesn't want to. And she could be a huge star if she could act. Like if that Roadhouse movie is good or if she's in that biopic and it's really heartfelt and she actually gives a good performance, I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I just don't think I don't think she some people have and some people don't. Gina Carano doesn't have it. But um she's she's not a great actress either, right? I mean, I, I talking still, about I she still, was fun in Deadpool. She was fun. Uh, listen, you put Gina Carano next to Ronda Rousey, and Gina Carano's Marlon Brando. I think, <laughs> I think that there, it's just the two of them that together. Just they're not that great actresses. No one's asking them to be. They're asking people to kick people in the face, and they can do that. Right. They kick people well. Um, let's go to the last Twitter question, right. and then I'll look at Wendy Camp. Okay, uh, Ramsey C writes: Have you had any funny or odd fan encounters? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Some great ones. Um, trying Hopefully to say, they're watching right I'm gonna now. Trying to kick you in the face. What? No, no there was one guy. A guy came up to me, and and this was at uh, I forget where it might have been celebration last year, and he, and didn't say anything except here. And I was like, what's that? And it was it was the Masters of the Universe 2002 series that I'm always talking about. He's like here, and I was like. Okay, and I knew that he was a fan because he was watching. That's nice. He's like, I know you. I was awesome. The guy was so cool, but it was just like, he's just like, <laughs> and I was like, that. I didn't know if he was like a magical elf or something that just gave me this thing that That's I wanted for so long. He was amazing. He was a nice guy, super nice guy. We talked about Masters of the Universe and how he loved it too, and it was a cool encounter because I was, I wasn't expecting it. It was just kind of. <laughs> I thought I like was getting a ticket from a cop or something. Yeah, you know, I've I've had a bunch of really great <laughs> fan experiences. Like last week in Florida. Uh, a guy came up and gave me a little Ferris Bueller's Day pop because I was in the movie. He's like, hey, you know, this is for you. And then Aww. like a Spicoli, which I was like, that's cool, too. But I wasn't, you know, I'll take that, too. But thank you. That was really cool. A guy gave me a drawing of me as Ming the Merciless oh, when I was cool. in uh, in uh, the Superman celebration out in Illinois. Uh, and uh, then I've also had like a couple of like slightly uh, sweaty encounters. Let's say like a guy came up to me. He's like, <laughs> he's literally... I would like to share with you like he was shaking and he had a piece of paper like shaking and then he put it down and it like he had he was like I've written the perfect Batman film oh. and he had like taken bits and pieces of all the different Bat- Batman mythology from the movies and the animated series and used scenes to kind of like Frankenstein together his perfect Batman film but the way he was explaining it to me was like I didn't really know what he wanted me to say about it I was uh-huh. like that's a really cool premise man like you put a lot of work into that he was like wouldn't this be the best and then he just stopped talking and the sweat started pouring and I was like I don't know how to interact with you dude I mean <laughs> congratulations good rock on I don't know what to do with that like I can't pass that you want me to Should give that to hug. someone no. Yeah. No. No. All right. You're All right. a, you're an intimidating. You are a giant in person. You, mm. You're an intimidating guy. Here's my favorite thing. People when they get pictures with me and I stand up, they're like, "Dude, you're really tall." I was like, I always say, "Yeah, I grow when I stand up," <laughs> because I'm tall, but you can't tell from sitting here. I'm actually nine feet tall. Yeah, but it's true. No, yeah. Most he was of the fans first cast I met are great. The fans are great. That's it's always nice say. when when they do what, like like bring a gift or something like that. Like uh, for my birthday show in Iowa last uh, last week, this guy uh, Kyle Harlow from Chicago, he brought me a Redskins jersey and I'm like holy crap that's Aww. amazing uh, the best fan gift I ever got was uh, this fan Amy in Boston she made a collage of all oh, these yeah. different like she cut out all these things I have in my office she and it's like based on my comedy album get to the castle all these different bits I did all these different like references and there's like some Star Wars stuff and there's some Van Halen some baby carrots some Coors Light everything <laughs> I love is in there and it's like she presented it to me and I'm like holy crap wow. this like took so much time it took so much effort one of the nicest things anybody's ever done for me it was great that's awesome that is awesome mm-hmm. oh you know what else is awesome the wendy cam wendy wendy cam you've been going through the, the topics you've been going through the twitter question topics what have they been saying in the chat room 
when we're going to talk about the Pokemon live action movie, and this is uh, specifically for Christian from Nathan uh -oh. Van Togel. It's simple, Christian. You capture animals in balls, and they become your slaves forever, <laughs> and fight other animals in your honor to the death. Yeah. It's like owning you a circus. Contain, yeah. But the ball is magic because you can contain like one, or you can contain like five hundred. They're just all compressed. And Sometimes they escape. Together. Well, we just the again. bottles. All right. Oh, do um, they escape? So we've got a lot of Pokemon fans in the chat, but I'm still seeing a lot of hell. No, no way for this movie. Some are saying a lot of anime to live action movies suck. Do you remember Dragon Ball? Uh, the Muster Man 7 says, besides all this Pokemon Go nonsense, this actually could be a great movie. Not kidding, there's so much to go on here, they just need the right director. And for the first image of Pennywise release, a lot, of say, a lot are saying the first image looks pretty good. Um, Black Masamune X says, gotta see the teeth to make sure, and clowns are scary, so <laughs> let's move on to some of the Twitter questions. The movie with in, indefinite uh, endings, Memento, Solaris, Sucker Punch, Interstellar, Old Boy, Vanilla Sky, Gone Girl, and um, bad movies that they, with great premises that you want to see remade, The Purge, The Last Airbender, mm. Pixels, Jumper, and Apocalypse. And then for no pixels, uh, please. <laughs> someone wrote in their own little funny slash odd fan encounters. Uh, Jose Rodriguez says, I will always remember the story that was told during the AMC days. They said someone went up to Schnepp and said, I like your character on Movie Talk. <laughs> yeah, actually, I was with Camp Pia. We were in one of the AMC theaters, and somebody's like, Schnapp, man, I love your character that you play on, on the movie talk. And we started laughing afterwards, like awesome. like we're like scripting it. You actually have a real, like, you're, look, yeah. be honest, you're Mr. English for real. I am. Well, you may say, what's going on there? You know, so this is my real voice. Hey. Thank you, Mr. English. Uh, nice to see I've you. Been, I've been, I was outside just having a biscuit and just got popped that back in. What's going right. on? Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us here on Glider Movie Talk. Thank you, Wendy, for telling us what the fans are saying in the chat room. I'd like to thank you guys. Once again, remember that we are doing that San Diego Comic-Con meet and greet. It's next Thursday. It is a week from tomorrow, and it is going to be from 9 to 6, nine? No, 6 to 9 p.m. Make sure you're there outside the Fox Sports Grill. I'd like to thank everybody on the panel today. First of all, Mr. Schnepp. Where can they find you? Well, you guys can follow me just on Twitter <laughs> and Instagram, just at John Schnipp. And uh, you see, watch my show, Heroes. It's on tonight, uh, today, later at 5 o'clock, and it's clicking on with Campea and Burnett. And Ashley V. Robinson, she's going to be on it too. And we'll see you at San Diego Comic Con. You know, when you do that voice, I want to kick you in the face. You know what I mean? Oh, come on, Statham, give me a break. <laughs> Next, it's Mark Ellis. Where can I find you? What about your English voice? It's like you say a sentence, then you take a break, and you like recharge yeah. your English battery. <laughs> and you yeah, just throw another is, one in there. Mark, it's just not on all the time. I have to just, like, just I have to recharge it. You know, now it's changing even. Oh, I can't buddy, hell, you can find me in the Fort Lauderdale Improv <laughs> oh this God. week. And I look forward to all you fan encounters. You can get tickets at my website. MarkEllisLive.com Right, you're right. All right, here we go. Ashley. We've got to do a different accent every single day. You guys can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. Ashley Mova. Happy Wednesday, guys. You better watch. Oh, no Brexit. Oh, we're getting political. Uh, I knew that was going to happen. All right, so, guys, and make sure you watch the Top 10 show. It's going to be on today, 2 p.m. you got Matt Nose. you got John Roca, The Outlaw. They are talking Top 10 movies. Make sure you go and check that out. This is their third episode. It's a really fun show. Great dynamic with those two. Go and check it. You can check me out, Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram, every Thursday on Collider Jedi Council. I just interviewed Chuck Wendig, who is the author of Aftermath Life Debt. Had a really cool conversation with him about it. Go and check that out. If you want to know about the new canon novels, it's one of the ones. It's a post-Jedi novel. It's really cool. So do that. And then we'll catch you tomorrow. Cheerio, old hey traffic guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.